like when I'm sorry. Uh, hi guys, welcome back to another episode <laughs> of the Pretty Petty Podcast. I am Mercedes. And I'm Mira. Yeah. And why would you put that song back in my head? Bitches be quick, but I'm quicker. I can't. It's so good. Ice Place mm-hmm. is so unproblematic, and we need a little unproblematic female rap. Especially right now. Um, but quick check in. How how was your week, Mir? Oh, we should probably adjust the elephant in the room, how there was no episode last week. Yeah. Because I sounded like Marge Simpson times 10 and I got in the discord and she said I sound like I died. So <laughs> there wasn't no. It wasn't just you, though. Uh, this yeah, time. Madness and death. This time last week, is we record on Sundays. And so mm-hmm. I was in the emergency room on Sunday, so we couldn't record on Sunday. And then the very next day was going to re-record and then Mira was really sick. So apologies. It was not on purpose. It definitely won't be. A reoccurring theme we're taking this podcast very seriously but anyway uh mary let the folks know what you've been doing um trying to recover uh sleeping lots of medication <laughs> uh with a sprinkle of edibles in there because why not me same thing um i actually recorded and edited the video that i'm gonna put up tomorrow and i'm so proud of myself and um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Not just because I'm obsessed with this podcast, but also because I have a we have a very special guest today. Um, you might know her as Jazzy Guns. I know her as Daddy Guns. Jasmina. Oh. She's an acclaimed and super talented content creator um, who has been doing this for years and who I look up to. Clap, clap, clap. Desi, go ahead and say hello to the people. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jasmine, Jazz, Jazzy, Jazzy Guns, Bang, Bang, Gang, Gang, whatever you want to call me, I'll answer. So, <laughs> How are you feeling today, Jazz? I feel good. I'm comfy. Uh, today is Sunday. I'm relaxed. It's my uh, rest day from the gym because I've been going every day. Yeah, you are working out at oh, home wow. every day. So Sunday is my cheat day slash rest day. So I'm having a fun day today. Jazz is my accountability person. So every time I work out, well, not every time, but most of the time when I have started working out, I text her. And, we like, and most of the time when she'd be texting me, I'm at the gym, then yep. I fall asleep, then come back, and then I'd be like, ooh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, so are y'all down with the icebreaker? I'm going to ask two. I'm going to ask okay. one that's Christian and of, Wait, the, of God, and then I'm going to ask one that's heathen and more close to my spirit and how I'm feeling currently. Uh-oh. I feel like heathen's going to be more my side. So... You can only fuck in one position for the rest of your life. What position are you picking? I damn, that's kind of hard too. Right, Right, because I'm like, there's how high is everyone? With certain ones, it's like it requires more 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 energy. So this one, I'm like, (laughs) yeah, like if I do that every time, like I'm like, okay, hold on, Um, it's actually tricky. Um, you know what? I'm gonna. I don't know. I think it's called the wheelbarrow. Where Not it's like the wheelbarrow. I, wait, is wait. that what it is? It's like mm-hmm. whenever you're. It's basically doggy style, and then whoever's behind you is holding your arms back. That sounds like the wheelbarrow. Or your that hair. Be, well, hold on. It's then yeah that no because I was thinking like doggy, but like what you just explained. So that's like okay. So that then. Yeah. <laughs> I like the feeling that? of not being able to yeah. move. Or escape the dick, I should say. Yeah, exactly. Damn. I was going to say doggy, but I like the intimacy of a uh, missionary. Jesus. Ew. Yeah. Ew. You want to look in their eyes? What are you in yes. love? Ew. Yes. <laughs> like, yes, I am. Yes. Nigga. Yo, imagine fucking somebody you have feelings for. It couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. Wow. <laughs> my heart. Oh my god! Look, I'm at a very intimate moment in my life, so <laughs> sometimes, sometimes people just want love. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Uh, senseless, whatever. 
Um, so for those of y'all who are new around here, we are going to be starting with our segment called The Mess, where we basically go over all the shenanigans and buffoonery that celebrities <clears throat> have acted upon this week. I'm I'm not going to start out uh-huh. with Nikki just quite yet. Let's let's ease into it. We need a little, you know, all this talk of sex. Let's let's foreplay it up just a <laughs> tiny bit. Oh my god. <laughs> um, what's the most Christian story I have right here? Okay, you know what? I'm um, just because it just came up on my timeline. Have y'all seen uh-huh. do y'all know Christian Rock? Yeah, 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 unfortunately, but yes. Right, right, yeah. right. So we all thought, you know, once Blueface went to prison that she would, you know, move on. And it seemed like she mm-hmm. did. I think I oh, recall God. seeing oh, did like, pictures of her with a new man, supposedly. But oh. uh, she just debuted today her new face tattoo. Have y'all seen this? She got something else on her face? You. I need no, I need y'all to I need y'all to Google it real quick. Krishan oh, Rock tattoo. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> it, I know what. Let's see her reaction to this shit. I've seen it. It's it's like I I wanted her to be so it. much better. So, audience, if y'all haven't seen this, she already had this fool's name tattooed above her Yo, eyebrow. No, not her. She got another one of him. Mm. Not only that, it's his full face on her face on her it's right full cheek. Full face, head, hair, everything. Everything. Yo. If that nigga got a freckle, she has it tattooed on her face. I'm not gonna lie. The person that did it did I a mean, very good job. They did good work for for, <laughs> for what it's understand. depicting. But that is a terrible tattoo to get. But. I just what would it take for y'all to get a nigga's face tattooed on your face? Like not a there's no <laughs> there's no amount. There's no amount. Ain't no amount. You're like there's, there's no nary amount. a damn way. <laughs> Never in hell Nothing. would I ever do that. I don't care how much I like the person. See, like oxtail, oxtail right. off the bone. I don't. I don't. Know. And then, especially because of all the stuff that they've been through, talking terrible about each other. Why would I then get another fully detailed? Like at least with the other ones, it's like, all right, they were done bad enough. I don't really know who it is. But like, you can that one was a good one. We see that. That's yeah. Him. That's a clear him on yeah, your face. Yeah, yeah. Like cover what? girl ain't gonna cover that. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Oh god. I would get a dude's face tattooed on my face. But hear me out, hear me out. Wait, this what? is this is the circumstances that it has to be. Okay. <clears throat> um, he would have to uh buy me a mansion. Um he would have to buy me whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted it. He would have to take care of my parents and my family. He would have to cure cancer. Um, that's mm-hmm. actually number one. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna need him to have like a seven foot tongue. Obvious seven reasons. Foot. Um, yeah, I want a lizard. Where's that going? I want a lizard where's nigga. Where's going? <laughs> that where is it going? We gotta stop. No, I'm playing. I wouldn't even get nobody's name tattooed on me who wasn't like a blood relative. Damn. Yeah, I I think that like the only time, yeah, like the only time that like you could like get a name tattoo and it'd be like, all right, that's fine. Like as if that's like your parents or like mm-hmm. something like people that birthed you or people that you birthed, like one of the two. Like no, not nobody. Imagine friend, birthing something. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is life all over again. The game of life where I chose to have children and she did. <laughs> All right. Uh, do y'all be watching award shows? I know me or don't, but Jazz, do you be watching mm-hmm. award shows? Not at all. I will figure out who won <laughs> in the morning when I wake up. <laughs> <laughs> um. So the Academy Award nominations came out this mm-hmm. week, and um, it came out. Um, Barbie, a movie that I, I personally loved. Mm. Did y'all like Barbie? I liked Barbie. I think it could have been better, but I liked it. I uh, yes, I, I just mm-hmm. watched it for the first time like mm-hmm. this week. Hold I up, did you watch Saltburn yet? yet? I got halfway through. Bro! It. It's confusing. I, I, it's no, confusing. nah, we're talking about it because I made Jazz watch it, <laughs> so we're gonna talk about it real quick. Pause on the Barbie it. story. Okay, so right. Salt. I told Mira three African American weeks ago to watch Saltburn, yeah. and Probably I have the same time as me. <laughs> 
And I started, <laughs> but I ain't finished because I was like, what the fuck is this? It didn't even get, no, if you got only got halfway through, it didn't, didn't even get to anything. So, a, you know what? The wild shit happened at the end. You ain't gonna finish it, so we might as well spoil it for you. Spoiler alert, <laughs> right. spoiler alert, I'm, spoiler alert. I'm okay with that because I don't know what the hell that was. So, Saltburn, little synopsis, is a story about a misunderstood young man who goes to school with a attractive, good looking, rich. rich white boy, Jacob Elodi, I think that's his name. Yeah. From uh, Euphoria. And um and and J- Jacob invites this misguided young man to his place, his home, this mansion that's called Saltburn. Mm-hmm. And um hijinks ensues. Um so okay, so do you okay. It's gonna be kind of hard he, to explain everything. Do you, do you think he was in love with him? Like really in love with him, or do you think he was just like obsessed with the idea of him? The idea of him, yes, because he also hated him at the same time. Yeah, he resented what he was. So, Jesus. yeah. What was the most fucked up scene in your opinion from both of y'all that y'all saw of, of what you saw, Mira? Ah, uh, wait, I'm gonna let her go first. <laughs> I didn't. What I saw, oh, what the hell did I see? I didn't really see nothing too fucked up. It was sort of still the beginning. But um, what I do remember was just he watch Mary didn't get past that. the fucking credits. Quote he, me. I Quote. did. No, I did. Don't do that. He he was giving stalker <laughs> energy. That's another thing that kind of turned me off. Like the nigga said, "Oh, I might see you later." He's still gonna go to the place anyway. Kind of like he was like following him around. I'm like, is this is this gonna lead to some type of obsession? Because this is giving obsession energy. Like he like he grows some type of obsession with this nigga. Yeah, obsession yeah. might be a safe word. <laughs> that might be a word that actually fits but uh okay so my I'm not gonna say exactly what it is but it was it was actually two scenes you can say one, it you can say it okay oh. one was the grave scene do you want to do you want me to explain what the grave scene is or you want to go ahead and do it I, I do it I'll do it so again oh, spoiler like spoiler <laughs> no <laughs> I was about to say that's why I was like, do it. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, no. Um, Yo, Mira, sick. if you're like, why are you laughing so hard? Because this fucking scene that she thought I want her to act out is Wait, literally, what? listen, listen, listen. <laughs> the scene, okay. Okay, spoiler. Long story short, he ends up killing an homeboy's entire fucking family basically in different ways over several yes. m- time different periods methods. yes and then he kills jacob elodie or whatever elodie and then he fucks his freshly Dug shoveled grave. grave in the movie like with the dirt and you can't see mirrors clutching clutching like, <laughs> chest. like he got on top of the grave started undressing his funeral attire until he was butt naked and then started humping, took out, took out his thing. You can see his full dick. Like, and he's literally put fucking. it in the grave, like soil and started fucking it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. and There's then no to the word dirty dick. So this and then baby after, Dahmer, what is this? Then after he did all that <laughs> and he killed the whole family and now the house is like that castle of a home is his. Mm-hmm. He started dancing around the house what is fully the naked <laughs> with his thing out and we were seeing all of it and he was twirling. That thing was moving <laughs> everywhere and yeah. So See, now I knew he killed him, but what is the, all the other shit is a lot. Mir, I need you to look me in my eyes as I tell you about these other scenes that were in the movie. I just want to see your reaction. Weird. Matter of fact, ha- let me make you full screen real quick. Oh, <laughs> this nigga. So the first scene where like people were like freaking out, and I missed it the first time I saw it. I had to rewind it and catch it. Um, Jacob Elodie or whatever is in the shower and he was masturbating, and he comes and the cu- and he turns. He turns off the shower, he gets out. Homie comes in the bathroom, gets in the bathtub, and slurps the fucking cum out of the drain, bro. Yeah, Hello? like it's like he's licking and sucking up his essence. Like he was like, 
all in the like you know the you know the drain hole like that's where he was doing it. Yes. <laughs> like the water leading to it was that's what he was consuming oh uh, and then and then the second scene or one of the other scenes that people had a problem with was the vampire scene so <laughs> jazz's face <laughs> so he's he's hanging out with uh jacob Belodi's sister who um he said he seduces pretty much everybody in his family at one point or another but hello he's, he's outside yes. he's outside of saltburn she's sitting on a chair he comes out all of a sudden his whole personality has changed like the entire movie he's like soft-spoken and timid and really insecure and then he comes outside with a swagger and shit i was like okay who, who the fuck is this one you know so what happens is, I'm going to say this, you know, like a doctor, the young lady is oh, sitting shit. on the chair. He approaches her. He gets on her knee, on his knees. He lifts oh. her dress. What? Um, I believe he fingers her. Um, yes. And then proceeds to like touch his face, like touching everything. But the key detail is that she is probably on day two of her period. Yes. And so like it's fresh like blood, blood everywhere on her and dress, on her face, on his. And then she's like, why are hey, you playing the period blood? But he, she <laughs> told him, she told him that it was happening. And he said, I'm a vampire. It's OK. And so then he did, you know, the thing with the mouth down there during that time, <laughs> the blood came in his mouth and then kissed her. And then now she got the same blood that came out of her back onto her mouth and they're just exchanging it. Mm-hmm. 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 So okay, for no, our okay. listeners at home, um, I think I should describe Mira's face for you. She looks perplexed. She actually looks like she's questioning why she's still here, like mm-hmm. on the planet. Mm-hmm. Not specifically just the podcast. Um, I'm sorry. I just... Okay. I. I needed you to this watch it. we said you had to keep watching. <laughs> and despite everything we I'm just said, I, I fucking love the movie. <laughs> That's I thought the music was amazing. I thought it looked beautiful. I thought the storyline was good. I love the movie. That's insane. Um, and I usually don't like freaky shit like that, but I loved it. Um, okay, so we were talking about Barbie. Um, you know, she was, just a, she was just a Barbie girl in a Barbie world menstruating so what happened was uh <laughs> the the academy awards released their nominations and uh mm-hmm. ryan gosling was nominated for i'm assuming best actor in a leading picture but um greta gerwig who was mm-hmm. like the director um and margot robbie um who of course played barbie neither Mm -hmm. one of them were nominated for the academy awards which is crazy which is um but i mean when you think about who runs the academy like a bunch of old white men Mm -hmm. barbie was a very very feminist film but he said quote i am extremely honored to be nominated by my colleagues alongside such remarkable artists in a year of so many great films and I never thought I'd be saying this, but I'm also incredibly honored and proud. And that's for portraying a plastic doll named Kim. But there is no Ken without Barbie. And there was no Barbie movie without Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie, the two people mm-hmm. most responsible for this history breaking, globally celebrated film. Shout out to him. Exactly. You know what? Mm-hmm. I have like in my head, like a fantasy white boy roster of like celebrities who, are, you know, are white and, and that's, also boys and he's always been one mm. and this just kind of reinforced the fact that yes i would give you vagina oh that's where that meme came from what that i saw then i guess i guess where like it said that he was nominated or won something and like his face was like really like huh like that one like i, I think it was a song nomination like song in a movie or something mm-hmm. and like i think it was like he won over something else which should have won, and then he was looking kind of confused because he was like, like, why, like, why? like mm-hmm. why did I win for that Ken song? But okay, I think that's dope of him. I mean, just him honestly starring in that movie, I feel like is kind of a big deal because of the message in that film. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of male actors in Hollywood 
might shy away from it or might ask for like script changes. Mm-hmm. But I think it, I think it's cool that he made this little statement. I think he did a great job in a movie. I think he did fine. I still I still would change some stuff in a movie, but I think he did fine. What would you change? Um, the main focus on Ken. <laughs> 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 like yeah, I like I, him being Ken, but let's take Ken out of the picture just a little bit. Like just okay, so I'm not bugging because yeah, <laughs> I watched it and I was like, I feel like this is a bit too much about him and his epiphanies. This shit is called Barbie. Like yeah, what are we doing right now? Because yeah. I was a big fan of like, well, I was a fan of Barbie first, of course, because that was like the first one of the first dolls I had. Then Bratz came out. And then that's when I was yes. a big. Brat you give Rasco energy like, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and that my mom uh, would always like buy me like Sasha or Yasmin. Yasmin just because her name was close to mine. And then um, I had all of them, but it was mainly like Sasha because it was like, you know, black girl and everything like that. And when I watched the movie and I saw a little piece of it that I don't feel like everybody caught was when she Barbie went to the high school and those girls were making fun of her. Those were Bratz dolls references of like yeah. each one, like Sasha, Jade, Chloe, and Yasmin was all at the table. And I was like, oh my, I was the only one in my theater. Like, oh my God. That's so cool. And nobody noticed. I felt like such nobody. a nerd. I was like, bruh, I'm the only one that sees this. <laughs> and I I'm thought it was going to be more movie of movie that throughout the movie, yeah. but it wasn't. That was fire. Um, Somebody else watching the movie where pointed that out. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's Sasha. That's the that's I said, that. That's <laughs> cute. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I agree with y'all. Yeah, I would have taken out that whole plot line with Will Ferrell. Oh. Yeah, because why? And I would have made Ken a little less dumb. I feel like the message would have been more powerful if Ken had learned something in that movie. I feel like he didn't learn anything. No, at all. He just you. he just got confidence to just be him. Like he didn't learn about like gender roles or mm-hmm. anything like that. But um, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah the Will Ferrell thing could definitely be taken. I think that's the number one thing I would have taken out. Probably. Oh, I that fast forward. I forgot that he was in the movie at some point, and then when he came back, I was like, oh, <laughs> like I forgot you were here. Um, <laughs> damn. All right, do we have any other happy stories before we get to the bullshit? Okay, here we go. Last happy story, and then. <laughs> um. So apparently. Hmm. Common was on Jennifer Hudson's talk show. I've never seen an episode of her talk show. I feel like so many celebrities have so many talk shows now. Like Kelly Clarkson got one. Who else got? I feel like was it Drew Barrymore? Drew Barrymore always in somebody's lap crying on her show. That's the only clips I've seen. Something wild Mm -hmm, mm intimate. Um, but apparently Jennifer Hudson has a a TV show, and I'm always here for a black woman succeeding and and owning her own brand. And then Mm -hmm. Common who possibly is the only light-skinned man who has been ran through more than Drake. No, it's Common. People want to talk about women getting around. Common has been with a list. But anyway, Common went on Jennifer Hudson's show and he goes on, and I don't know if y'all seen the clip, but he's sitting there in all pale yellow and he's he's basically describing the woman that he's been seeing and he says stuff like how she's talented and funny and beautiful and oh, that's good. Uh I think he might have said something like a woman of God and stuff. And she's sitting right there looking at him, kinda nodding, kind of pretending like she doesn't know what's happening. And it's it's honestly really cute. Um, and I really hope that she's happy for the entire four months that they continue this relationship. What do y'all think? Jesus. I Christ. thought you were going to say he was proposing, but then you said that. No, hold up. Y'all go ahead. I'm going to Google Common and right. his that dating history. Say, from what I know, Common is a whore. Yeah, well, he <laughs> kind of got around. He's a, he's a slut. Like, I forgot he was with Tiffany Haddish. 
I'm like, yep. it's crazy because we joking, but like they don't call men sluts for that same, you know what I'm saying? That I was people gonna that say date the a lot. Same. Yep. I was gonna say yeah. the same thing. Like it's always a focus on like whenever like celebrity women like get with mm-hmm. other celebrity dudes or somebody else, they always talk on them like, oh, she's pass around, whatever, whatever. But then yeah. as soon as a guy celebrity does the same thing essentially, which is just date around, not a word is spoken, like not a nothing is said. And I'm just when? like, okay, he's not a he's not a whore too. Like, come on now. Yeah. I'm gonna apply that to <laughs> one. This one is a when did he have time to date Taraji P. Henson? How did I miss that? Wait. He was with I Taraji. I I think I remember him with Erica Badu. <laughs> I remember that for sure. I remember and that. I think I remember Serena Williams. I remember that I too. I don't remember that. Oh my God. I remember that too. That was I, a long time ago. <laughs> I'm looking at the pictures and and um his bussy must be good. <laughs> Wait, what? He was with Angela what? Rye or Ree or whatever. I forgot the 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 political analyst. That's a good match. Uh, That's a good match. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I feel like he was with Alicia Keys at one point, but apparently he wasn't. I don't know why I think that. No, that's you thinking of Swiss Beats. Um, yeah, they look similar to me. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> but anyway, congratulations, you guys. I hope you make it to Valentine's Day. Next story. Um, we're gonna start off the mess. Let's talk about. <clears throat> No, 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 this one's kind of good. Okay, so y'all know the Breakfast Club, which we'll be probably talking about in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, Charlamagne, the guy was on there and he was, and I just kind of was like, I want to talk about this just because I wanted to get y'all's opinion, not because it's necessarily okay. a news story. But uh, he was he was talking on his station, on uh, his radio station, and he was saying that um, Basically, how amazing SZA is for this generation, and how talented she is, and how she is basically this generation's Mary J. Blige. So, Mary, being I don't know if she's like officially known as like the queen of new R and B, or I feel like she has like a title like that. But I grew up on Mary, and I wanted to hear y'all's opinions. I only heard certain songs from Mary, and with SZA. I literally have never watched, never listened to an album at all. I've only heard like maybe like three songs fully and not saying that I don't like SZA, like she can do her thing, but it's just that. So how long like, have you hated black women? SZA. No. Oh my God. <laughs> First of all, I love us. Okay. So let's start there. But with SZA's music, it's just that to me, and I've said this before when I was live streaming, SZA sings in cursive to me. So it's like I always have to like have like subtitles there for me to figure out I'm what she's blind. saying. Because I really don't know. And like if I don't know what you're saying, most of the times I just kind of tune out. So that's just my reason for not listening. <laughs> um, I grew up on Mary and this is cool i listen to some scissor but i don't listen to enough for her either to kind of i don't have a yeah <laughs> i don't have enough yeah like some songs i listen to and i'll be jamming and she sound good and the, the singing with cursive shit always kill me because that <laughs> is a good descriptor because she be singing and I, I don't know what the hell be happening i do have to have the lyrics tab on spotify up when i listen to her I'd be like, oh, that's what she said? Word? Bet. Okay. But I like her music. I like her voice. I don't... I don't know. But where did Mary J. Blige comparison come from? That's like, where I'm Can that woman about. build her discography before we get to that point? I don't know why he yeah. talking like Mary J. Blige is not this generation's Mary J. Blige still. She's like, still she's here. not dead. Right. Like, she's still, still here. But... I'm with y'all. Like I listened to the weekend, whichever album has the weekend, where she's talking about um, sh- like having Dick clock in and clock out for a shift throughout the week. And <laughs> I haven't listened to like any album no. since then. I've heard the singles, and I think she's really, really good. But like when I think about like my shoulders were moving a second ago because I had real love playing in my head. Like that <laughs> song alone. <laughs> it's so like affirming to me. Like anytime I'm in a bad mood and I need to like clean my house, I just put on real love, and it's just like <laughs> <laughs> it just it just hit that spot. But um, if if it's not SZA, 
If you had to give that title to a artist in our generation, hmm. like someone, I guess, 20 to 40 in that time period, age bracket, who would y'all say would be closest? Would it be SZA? It might be. For R&B? Yeah, like as like an R&B mm-hmm. queen. Would Beyonce be R&B? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, here's some people talk about she's the best female rapper on the game right now. So I guess it's just... Oh, <laughs> Why you bring that to that up? Beyonce is I, the new little Kim. Uh, I don't know. First of all, no. <laughs> now you mean so you want to bumble with the B. Oh my God. I've never really thought of Beyonce as R and B. I feel like she's just maybe not R and B, but like maybe like I just feel like she's a well rounded artist to like where yeah. wherever she does venture, like whatever she wants to get into as far as music wise, she can do it and then do it effortlessly. Cause she's done country music. She's done she's dipped into Spanish music a little mm-hmm. bit. She's dipped into pop. She rapped a Electronica. little bit. Like she, yeah, Electronica Metal. Renaissance. Mm-hmm. She did, you know, like ball like it's like a lot. So I just feel like she can do whatever she wants whatever. to Ike. It might be scissor. It really might be. Um, it actually might be since I'm thinking about everybody that does solely. R&B. What else? I, I thought this tickled me. Um, ja Rule uh, was in his feelings because Billboard came out with their top 50 greatest rappers of all time list. He won on it. And he ain't one of them. He's not on it. <laughs> so some notable names is they had Gucci Mane at 38. Future at 34. Future at 34 is wild. Missy. Future at 34. Missy Elliott. Who made Miss, this list? It's Billboard. Uh, Missy Elliott oh, so is number like, 19. Oh, they make this list. Nicki Minaj is number 10. Lil Wayne is number 7. And y'all want to know who? Guess who's number 1. Guess who's number who 1. Go, I'm going to guess and say who? Eminem? Who they put? No, not Eminem, but did you know Eminem has the most Grammys of any rapper of all time? I'm not surprised. And it's not even close. Not he's 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 nice at what he does. Um, Jazz, what's your guess? <laughs> it better not be nobody new. I'm it's Jay Z. It's Jay Z. Oh, well, According to Billboard, he should definitely be top five. Bias, but I don't. Me. I still don't understand. I feel like Nas has to be number two, right? Maybe. Or maybe they put Tupac. Hmm. See, this this, this might not common. It's, like uh-huh. it's, it's not common. Oh my god! It's not common. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like for me, like the top like lists of like as far as like music or or rappers or whatever could be like skewed depending on what somebody's like interests are Ace. in it. Because my top rappers might not be somebody else's and. Uh, everybody always be like Biggie and Tupac got to be like number one or two or whatever like that. But I was like alive. How can I say this? How I was a baby kid, like when their music was circulating. So I wouldn't be the biggest fan of Biggie or Tupac. Like I would never say Biggie and Tupac are my number one because I didn't grow up with that. So that's why I'm just like, mm. like, you know, um, there's only one more story that I have to get to before we talk about Nikki. Nobody apparently has better fans than Britney Spears. Um, y'all saw that whenever it was like that whole hashtag free Britney movement and like people were really concerned about that. her. Her book did extremely well. Mm-hmm. Um, and but we also need to recognize the level of petty Britney Spears' fans are. I don't even know what they're called. I don't know either. Britney Spears fans. Yeah. I don't know. Um, the the British, the British. I'm gonna call them the British. British. Holy shit, that's so cute. The British are coming. So, <laughs> British gang, gang, bang, bang. This mm-hmm, week, mm-hmm. Uh, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> We're not adding that. We're not doing that. Nope. <laughs> not like, I got that shit copyrighted. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so Justin, who has not been anybody's favorite person lately. Um, I've never liked him since Janet Jackson, the Super Bowl situation. But apparently a couple of y'all still really liked him up until Britney came out with her book last year mm-hmm. where she mentions how um, he basically forced her to get in a, like abort their baby. 
um, how he cheated on her, all this stuff. And apparently that was the last straw for a lot of people. Um, so he decided this week he was going to debut his new single. Um, oh. I guess he hasn't put out music in a long... I can't think of no song from Justin Timberlake since Sexy Back on God. On yeah. God. But he came out with a song. Damn. And I listened to it. I listened to it one good, hearty time. Um, and it's called Selfish. It mm-hmm. gives... It gives in sync, honestly. Oh, really? It, it honestly does. It doesn't sound bad um, mm. to me. So <laughs> he quickly was rising on the iTunes charts um, on Friday. And he got all the way up to, I want to say, spot... And I think he reached number one, if I'm not mistaken. But Britney Spears has a song that she released in 2011 called Selfish as well. And do you want to know what Britney Spears fans did? The level of petty? They made that song they chart, it. didn't they? Uh-huh. And one day... <laughs> it overtook Timberlake. So now Justin Timberlake is number four and Britney Spears, a song that is 13 years old <laughs> that nobody has ever heard is number two on iTunes for all of the fucking world. Like... It's time to run it up. Like, he thought he was gonna like, do this. He is hell. That's like that <laughs> fan base, like support <laughs> her. Like and it. I have, I fuck with that. When you have someone and she, you're like, that's my queen. I don't care if she can't sing. I don't care if only movements that she can do involves her arms. I don't care. I don't oh care if the roots is seven inches. I don't care if she's doing pirouettes with fucking knives. I don't care. That's my queen. I'm standing beside her. And we're going to make her number two. Dressed as her doing the knife thing for Halloween. It was a great moment. <laughs> it was a great moment. But um, oh so I can't imagine that Justin's camp is uh, happy about that. Um, the fact that his first single in God knows how long is being beat by his ex's song that came out. But do you think that he before cares, Obama considering <laughs> that like he hasn't put out music for a long time? I'm assuming he hasn't put out music because I I don't really check for it. But do you think that he cares? I think as far as any male celebrity in Hollywood, I feel like their egos are so big. Mm. Mm that I there's no way it's not affecting him. And even if it's not affecting him on an ego level, he probably feels horrible that people hate him that much Mm. to go out of their way to do this to him. I got a, 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 again, I'm going to use the word hearty laugh out of it. It brought joy to me. It gave me black girl joy to see that happen. It's just funny that they resurrected a song that was so, so old (laughs) to bring it back. And a certain day, like they could just switch it on. <laughs> Look at how the world comes together for certain oh. things. <laughs> to be so, petty as hell. <laughs> do y'all can say, hold up. This is a great question, Mira. I got a question for both of y'all. Mm-hmm. Um, just a quick, quick question. On a scale of one to 10, mm-hmm. I know like it's our namesake, but how petty would you consider yourselves to be? One being angelic, 10 being Pet, 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 T. I used to be an eight. I'll say I probably tuned it down <laughs> to like a five or a six. I'm like a three. But that yeah. three comes out only if I feel like I have to reciprocate it. Like that's, that's it. <laughs> like I won't just do it for no reason. Like it has to be like a lot of reason. Yeah. You don't, yeah. you don't give overt petty ever. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say I was probably an eight and a half. And now it's like, I'm so focused on being unbothered. I probably say like four, maybe, but I want to work my way down is, to zero. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and these niggas paying my bills. Um, all right. Going from the best fans this week to the okay. fucking GED monsters on Nicki Minaj's side. This week, she lost her ever loving mind in a what I can only assume is a cocaine haze. Um, you probably did. Right. <sighs> okay, I was saying it like a two day was it like two days ago or yesterday when 
when I, um, I was playing Power World and I was like, yeah, so I think that she's using something that's not green. Um, and I think that it is white. And so I don't, I can't say what, but it has a chalky color to it. I'm going to go through the whole timeline. Feel free to interrupt when y'all want, because this, this is given it's so long an obituary. And it kind of is actually. Um, so Friday, Megan D. Stallion released a song, her first single, I'm assuming, off her new album, and it's called Hiss. In the song, she says a line that is like, I got it. These hoes don't be mad at Megan. These hoes mad at Megan's law. I don't really know what the problem is, but I guarantee y'all don't want me to start is the lyric. Mm-hmm. Megan's law is the federal law that mandates um, all established sex offenders um, have to be registered um, and they have to notify communities when they're moving. In the song, she also happens to be mentioning, um, she calls out men who hate on women who get BBLs, but they have the same marks. And a lot of people took that to mean that was Drake. I know I sure as fuck thought of Drake immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, because you know he had that liposuction mm-hmm. on his tom tom. So everyone saw that, but including one Onika Minaj. Oh, no, not her, not her name. <laughs> her government. Nicki Minaj's husband, in case you didn't know that, was convicted when he was 16 years old of attempted, like, uh, SA of a girl around his same age, and he got four years in prison. Um, And then he has since been put under house arrest for one year and probation for two years um, for not doing Megan's Law. He and Nikki, I guess, moved into a neighborhood. I'm sorry, it's not funny. It's just like, why the fuck of all the niggas in the world? Okay. No, you're right. Continue. You continue. You're not wrong. <laughs> but you know what? Even though Megan's Law could refer to several people in the industry, it could refer to Drake. It could refer to R. Kelly. It could refer to Takashi Six Nine. There's lots of people that this could have been. Mm hmm. Because up until now, did y'all think that Nikki and Megan had a problem with each other? They did that. I, I was not even um, aware. So because I don't really follow them that, I don't like that. Follow them, but stand stuff. Despite the fact that I have all these things muted and I've had for years, mm-hmm. a lot of stand stuff trickles into my feed. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would see things here and there, like little things that Nikki would say, and I was like, "Is she being shady?" Over the mm-hmm. years, but I think in her most recent, one of her more recent songs, she told my Shane fuck with horses since Christopher Reeves. I didn't even know that she said that, but like she mm-hmm. apparently has been doing that and like breadcrumbing little snide, like slick remarks in her music for like the past two, three, four years. I'm like, really? Um, mm-hmm. But I, didn't and I know. heard, I heard that it was all because she did that song with Cardi, mm-hmm. uh, WAP, and like I guess she felt a way about that. And ever since then. I believe she might have been throwing sneak discs, but this this is my thing, like with the whole like rap industry. But I guess apply this to regular people too, right? Like so, especially with rappers. Like you say, you got a problem with somebody, right? Like why can't we just bring it back to the old days where you would make a diss track? Yes, clearly state who you were talking about fully, because now we on Twitter, so people be subtweeting, not adding the person who they talking about, so, so that audiences and commentators be like, oh, who is this about? And speculating people that's probably not even a part of it at all and they getting drug into it and now they hate each other for no reason because Stans is doing stuff. Like, why don't we just at the person you talking about? No. I've, I've subtweeted before, but mm-hmm. I get subtweeted a lot. Um, But I've definitely had instances where I've questioned people and, oh, no, I'm not talking about you. It's just general conversation and I, you get tired of that shit too when you are tired of things like that and you're like yo who are you talking about oh no I'm just talking about this and they making up mm-hmm. shit but I'm, I am I already decided I was going to stop doing that shit because I was like whoever talking they ain't going to at me you know so what? who cares right like they don't at you That's they just want to just create controversy and get people to that is what it is people just want to mm-hmm. create controversy and get people talking They'll never at you. 
They never say, yo, I got to talk to you or, mm-hmm. you know, when they do talk to you, they cop and please or the conversation is totally different than what is being said on the Internet. Yeah, I don't got time for that shit. Yeah, I have like one or two things, like the one or two things that I would do if I have a problem with somebody is tell you to where I'll tell you what's the exact problem or I just mm-hmm. won't say anything at all. And I'll just keep moving with my life. I'm never going to tweet about you or go, um, you know, do that. Like, I'll no, just act it. like nothing has happened and continue moving on. Um, I just I just want to give everyone an update. Um, the Eddie has fully hit and I feel amazing. So I'm just sitting here talking to them and I'm nodding and I got the biggest smile on my face. Um, so speaking of Twitter, the first thing Nicki Minaj did whenever she heard this this lyric and I guess she immediately thought it was about her. She went on Twitter She called Megan Thee Stallion a manipulative liar. And then she claimed that Megan uses ghostwriters for her music. She said another one, um, every album that she's ever released equals flopped. Okay. Um, I remember she went on IG Live. She was going on. She said stuff like, bad bitch, she likes six foot. I call her big foot. The bitch fell off. I said, get up on your good foot. Um. <laughs> no, I'm laughing because when I when I when I watch that part, and she's just basically rhyme with foot, foot, and foot, and yeah, so yeah. Like, it was it was it was like three foots, and then like somebody in the comments was like, feet. was like red foot, two foot, one foot, two foot, <laughs> like Dr. Seuss. That's so so a lot of feet. Yeah. It's like be a soul nigga. It, here's the thing. Here's life. the thing. If you think somebody's attacking you because you support pedophiles, and you come back talking about terrible. shit, someone being tall, y'all is terrible. It's like yeah, she said yeah. I married a pedophile and had a baby with. Him. <laughs> and my brother is one too. But you got big feet. What? But you oh, taller than me, huh? Boy. That's your way. Like you didn't even just say I had big foot once. You said it three times, and that was your bar. Foot, foot, and foot was all you got on me. This is sad. Megan couldn't help but get shot in the foot. You can help anyway. <laughs> you so Megan, you know, Megan took it back old school, and she the very she called the Breakfast Club. And they asked her if this song was about a specific person. And Megan said, basic, she said, quote, a hit dog will holler. She said, whoever feel it, feel it. Like, and holler she did. If it applies, it applies. If it doesn't apply, then she made it feel Oh my gosh, she lost her fucking mind. It's been mind. two days, yes. And I, I recently actually, like probably 10 minutes before we started this uh, podcast, I saw that she had posted an AI, first of all, it's an AI photo. Mm -hmm. Uh, on her Instagram story depicting a female gorilla or ape as you can say with one foot bandaged and the other one not so clearly saying that this is Meg with a bad foot but like I'm just like how could you as a black woman refer to another black woman as an ape so that's her new single Bigfoot that she said that she was going to release literally as soon as we were recording Mm mm-hmm um, I, I don't even want to listen to it. Um, I'm sure the internet will tell me what it's about. Uh, but after Nicki Minaj did all this on IG Live, talking about good foot and all this stuff, um, Megan literally all she did was post a picture of herself laughing on her IG story. That's literally all it was. Damn, I saw that, and she posted like a picture of like if you watch animated specific flowers that come up whenever they're red flowers and it's usually whenever they're somebody yeah. about to get destroyed like somebody about to like die yeah. and so yeah. she just posted that so everybody was like oh there might people are speculating that there's going to be a part two to this disc because they're like this is only the beginning like i'm about to destroy you <laughs> basically then may uh nikki i'm um, sure to post that reference at megan's late mother because you know megan lost her mother but it suggested that she lied during her 2022 interview with Gail King about her controversy with Lanes. 
it all the she also had a post that was referring to party who's megan's ex-boyfriend and we all know how that ended he she walked in on him having sex in her bedroom i would have killed him but you know whatever <laughs> she called megan a disgusting serpent and then she said quote you bringing up 30 year old t because no man has ever or will ever fucking love you is what she um, said didn't he recently get tra- you know what okay. <laughs> um she said uh she added megan on on twitter and she said you scary as pussy as broke as ho scared of me putting a song out but trying to spar with the motherfucking queen lied on your dead i guess mother and then she added megan she says um that uh she did the hot girl summer song with megan for free and that megan begged her to do it she and then she said i'm going to be releasing a song called bigfoot 3 p.m and nikki also said i saw in a post that she had made four or like five diss songs for megan before this and she was just waiting to release it because she knew what kind of person megan the stallion was and she was just ready to release it um so she already had pre-recorded diss tracks for megan the stallion and so to that, that I say, fucking what? For a long time. Exactly. That's, that's not like you just, that's oh, I just have it ready just in case. Like, I like this person, but I just have it ready. Like, you know, like you're still don't like her. Like, you didn't like her for a while. Let me ask so, y'all this. Probably, How did y'all feel? Like her when they was, ooh, How did y'all bad. feel about Nikki before this week? Um, <laughs> Mirror's face. I can say that I don't. I'm not a big fan of her shenanigans, I would say. But like I did listen to her like her like recent album, yes. Like I did listen to it. Like I listened to it. I like some of the songs. Everybody was dancing to the song Everybody, like on TikTok everywhere. So it's like people was definitely feeling Nicki Minaj before this and was like, you know, putting aside her antics and stuff like that. And then this week came and now we're just like, okay, you doing a lot, a lot of stuff and <laughs> bringing up a lot of stuff when you got it's kind of like it's kind of like throwing stones when you have a glass house like it's like um ma'am it's not even glass we didn't forget. like just like just made in china we're, plastic yeah like just oh, because yeah. we're jamming to your album when we like your music and it comes out and stuff like that does not mean right. that we have automatically right. forgot about everything else that has been attached because some people separate the art from the artist. So they'll, they'll like whatever they put out and then just kind of like put to the side, like what they've been doing or what they participate in, I should say. But this week I'm just like, um, Hmm. It was, it was that, it was that, that ape one that got me. Cause I was just like, okay, so we're, we're black women calling the other black women apes. This is the same woman that, did she not call little Kim, um, Michael Jackson's monkey? Oh, she said that? Yeah. It sounds yeah, like, um, it sounds familiar. She called, uh, call her Bubbles. Wasn't Michael Jackson's monkey named Bubbles? Yeah. Talking about oh she my God. Up for the nigga monkey. That was years ago. That was stupid hoe. I must yeah. not have been paying attention to the comments. Yeah, I didn't. The, I heard her say the I line, but I didn't know that's who she was talking about or what was happening. But they was like, yeah, that's what she was talking about, little Kim. I was like, oh, so that's that, none of this surprises me. So this is not new. Okay. This is not new. Mm. She been wilding. And a, a part of little teenage me is dying inside because I used to be such a fan. I used to be so excited to hear her music. Mm-hmm. And now I'm just like, what is she doing? Why well, I feel like. Why she? Th- why are you throwing your legacy in the garbage for a nigga? Like it's so many niggas that want you. Why would you do this? What are you doing? I feel like that's what everybody feels like, and I feel like uh, I think I saw something about her like body shaming Meg or some people. I don't know, but it's yeah. just crazy that somebody like her would body shame. Oh, oh yeah, she was going you... through co- like posts on Twitter and TikTok. I saw them myself. Mm. of people making rebuttal videos or making fun of Nikki in some way. And she would comment on like, it had to be at least a dozen different videos that she commented paragraphs attacking someone. And usually it's the physical. She appearance. almost got kicked off for TikTok. Really? Yeah. She almost got banned off for TikTok. I think that was yesterday or the day before for that exact thing. All the woman said was just like, 
you know, you being who you are, why are you kind of like acting like this? Like who, you know, you're supposed to be, you the queen. Like, what are you, you know, responding to these people and carrying on like this? She mm-hmm. writes this nasty ass paragraph calling her ugly. She said the lady got a porno face, all type of nut shit. And I woke up and I seen a tweet from her saying that TikTok get like a screenshot of like what TikTok sent her on like this big ass warning. And I was like, what are you over there doing that TikTok sent you this? Oh my Old God. Old ass paragraphs yelling at people for having an opinion. It's just crazy because it's like, all right, so you're a rapper. You're this big time rapper, Nikki. And you're like, you call yourself the queen of rap. People have different definitions, whatever. And you be talking about people all day in your songs, like and referencing people, but never saying names or you may, whatever it may be. And then as soon as fans have an opinion, now we go to body shaming, but you're the one that bought your body and lied about it, right? <laughs> you're the one that she lied about it too. She couldn't know? lie about it no more. No more. But that's what, but my thing, my thing with with getting your body done, I don't care if you get your body done. Do do what you got to do to make yourself feel better. I don't care. But like my thing is when you lie about it. Like let's let's not lie about it that you got your body done. If you got your body done, just say you got it done. You you liked it because you want to improve something. You got it done. You had the money and that's expensive. Go do it. It's your life. Go live your life. But let's not lie about it and then shame others like as if you're just perfect. Like I don't understand that. Um at the very beginning I mentioned that she has the worst fans. And I just want to give an example of something I've seen in the last 24 hours. So y'all might have seen this video. Um, it's, it's very viral on Twitter right now, but it's like this white kid. Um, yes. yes. And he <laughs> he delivers what I would consider a masterful read. And it was so clean. Like how he, he said it like it was casual conversation. It was like a symphony, like he could be Beethoven. It was beautiful. And he made a follow-up TikTok last night after he deleted the video. Oh, why did And you- um, his family was getting doxxed, death threats. People were showing up at his family members' houses, threatening to kill him, basically ruining his life. And he's on the video pleading with Nicki Minaj fans to leave him alone, that he's autistic, um, that he was, he just made the video because it was funny and how he loves Nicki Minaj and how his family members also love Nicki Minaj. Like it was, it was truly fucking sad and disgusting that he had to do that. I feel like if this was a normal situation and Nicki Minaj didn't have the fan base that she does, I feel like we'd be hearing way more from celebrities weighing in their opinions. I feel like there's a certain amount of fear that comes attached Um, to speaking out against Nicki Minaj. My thing is, is like, I feel like you're allowed to still like, you could still be like a fan of somebody or say that you like, like their works or whatever, but still be able to critique them on when they're wrong. Like you're not going to have a fan base of just yes men. Like you're going to have people that just want you to like do better. Like, yes, I love you. But like what you're doing right now makes you look fucking crazy. Like you look Mm -hmm. insane. What you're doing is craziness like and i don't know if it's like you got something else going on like drug i don't know what it is but i'm hoping that you get help or whatever because this is not looking good for you and still appreciate what she has put out so it's just like i don't know like i don't know about that so you brought up something interesting earlier and i want to get y'all's opinion on it like that ability not to get like deep into it um Mm -hmm. but like the ability to be able to separate the artist from mm-hmm. the artistry mm-hmm. and i've never been the type, of, the type of person who can do that same thing with content creators if i feel like a content creator is a fucked up person i'm not mm-hmm. going to support whatever they're doing and i feel like i was done with nikki when her brother was on trial and she was disparaging the little girl and paying all of his court fees and claiming he was innocent mm-hmm. when the evidence was there so I was done with Nikki then, but do y'all feel like y'all have the ability to separate the content that somebody makes from their character and the things mm-hmm. that they've done? I feel like to a point, like, like, okay, it's so like with Nikki, right? Like with, mm-hmm. with Nikki, 
um, one thing that like I always like had in the back of my mind. Cause I, and I don't know if this has ever been like uh, confirmed or anything like that, but I think that there's definitely some substance used sometimes. A Tina and, Snow. Yeah, I don't know what it is, no, but it's, some, it's something. No, I think it's she something. Is something. Yeah, too. I don't Do know. Pills what it make is. you act like that, like have like a, a manic episode. I don't know nobody that pop pills, but I definitely seen yeah, everybody like, knows bro pill addiction like years ago. So yeah, know. so like in my mind, I was thinking maybe okay, maybe it's because of that substance, whatever it is, that is making her act this way or make these decisions. And that's why I would kind of be like, uh, you know, like this, this person may have a problem and may not have the best cognitive process when it comes to certain things. So I try to like separate it like that sometimes. But like after this week, I'm just like, <laughs> I think this is just you. Like at this point, like I think that's just like, I don't think it's a substance making it that way. I feel like now. It's confirmed that this is just how you are. So I just want to say prior to this week, I had came to a decision that I was no longer going to judge women based on the men that they allow penetrate them. Mm -hmm. Um, Like Kiki Palmer, Simone Biles, Doja Cat. I was mm-hmm. like, I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to, you know, read these women in feels in type of way because, based on their man. And then Nicki Minaj came along and gave me this gift and made me realize, <laughs> no, I can't separate the two. If you <laughs> if you're with a toxic, horrible piece of shit person and you OK their behavior. No, I feel like you're just as bad. What was I going to say? Yeah, no, I, I can't separate because even in moments where you try to like rationalize it, I still yeah. feel for her. Right. I still yeah. feel for her and I'm still like part of me is like I hope whatever is she's dealing with she gets help and she gets better because this is mm-hmm. not as simple as this is beyond like surface level shit mm-hmm. um, but with a lot of the stuff that these artists these people especially in Hollywood that they do and then people are like but they make good music but they make good movies and I'm like nah I could live without that movie that nigga's a yeah. pedophile I'm good like yeah like I the R. Live Kelly thing song. yeah yeah, yeah like, like, like I, I have never listened to an R. Kelly song ever again like once I found out what happened cause like I think that I was a kid once that whole trial yeah. was happening so I wasn't even aware and then when I got older and then realized what those songs were actually about I was like oh yeah, hell this no. it. and yeah. I, I have never listened to another one y'all I have, a, I have an amazing idea for collab What's up? What? I would love Nicki Minaj and Christian Rock to do a remake of The Boy Is Mine. Okay. Why are you like You this? need to give it up. I'm just saying it would hit so specifically in the lyrics <laughs> of a I different can't. meaning. I cannot. Oh my God. She's a sick pop. They both give he's my man. I'm gonna stick beside him. Energy. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, you can go ahead and do that, girl. I, uh, Y'all gonna have a curfew. Oh my god. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> yeah. have at home dates all the time. Go ahead. You sound like a stressful ass life. <laughs> all right, <laughs> y'all. That's it for this week's <sighs> mess. Mira, what you got going on? I was just getting ready to to ask y'all, you know, how you feel about this one thing, right? So mm-hmm. me personally, I've been trying to be better about being more present mm-hmm. um, when I f- spend physical time with people, family, friends, things like that. Because mm-hmm. um, over the years, I have a bad tendency to be in my phone. I'm on Discord. I'm on social media. I'm scrolling. I'm posting. And, you know, I've been trying to get better about... um making sure I'm actively talking and engaging with the people that I'm with and I'm not just like doom scrolling or like stuck in my head or stuck in the corner off to myself um, when I go to events. And I feel like it is possible, not even possibly, it's definitely, I feel like fucked up a lot of like potential relationships and things for me because I spent so much time um, in my phone you, you like you said, you glued to social media or you're just what I like to call in work mode all the time. What can mm-hmm. I post? What can I do? What can I constant state of um, work mode do? Any of y'all experience that or have any like 
familiarity with that. I'm actually the opposite. Like I'm hard. That's why like I never know what's going on unless like I see it instantly when I'm like opening up Twitter because I'm like on Twitter for maybe about five minutes of the day every day. But when I'm mostly on my phone, I'm either playing, I'm either checking emails or I'm like playing like a logic game because I'm a nerd. So I like playing those on my phone. Um, you are fucking but, lying. Yes, You're playing you want to watch. You want to look? Overwatch. Oh, on my phone, okay. On my okay. Phone, yes. <laughs> and then Overwatch. Yes. Because she knows. <laughs> I'll be playing Overwatch with Dwayne. But like, I really don't be on social media hardly ever. So I'm like out of, out of that. Or I don't even have TikTok. Actually, I have a TikTok, but I don't be on it. So it's like, I don't know. Um, but when I'm with, with people, like in person, I hardly have my phone out. Like, that's why I barely, that's why I suck at like taking pictures with like, other creators or like when i'm at when i'm out yes you do whatever yeah see yeah. But she knows she knows but so am i <laughs> we're the two worst yeah, ones i'm not good with like, that either i never have no, my phone no, out no, and that means that i'm having fun because like i'm here and like i'm paying attention no, to you and everything so like like uh like even with uh berlin's ball when i was there i didn't take a single photo the only photo i took was the one that was taken of me by somebody else but i don't have any of me to like be like hey i was here like i have none of that so um for me it's not really a problem of being on my phone it's mm. more of like mentally not being in the same room as my body is and mm. it's usually because i'm thinking about the past or i'm thinking about the future mm always and like i heard this i don't know if i've said this to y'all but i heard this expression a long time ago that when you're stuck in the past and you're constantly thinking about the past that's what causes depression and thinking about the future and constantly thinking about that is what causes anxiety that's what i have the second yes one. i have both <laughs> yeah. um and so even though like i might be talking to somebody and like we're having fun and it looks like I'm giving you all my attention. I'm really thinking about rejection issues or hyper focused on your body language and whether or not like I have, I mean, side note, friendship PTSD, but I have like this tendency to like watch people and see like how, what their body is telling me, the cadence of their voice, whether they're smiling, the expression that they're having, whether they're looking at me or looking elsewhere, like I'm hyper vigilant of that. And it's been like that, like for at least a decade. And so that is more my problem. The phone doesn't have to be out for me not to be in the room. Mm. I get that because I'm an overthinker. So like I'm always thinking 24 seven. That's why it's hard for me to meditate. I'm trying to work on that. Um, but like, yeah, because I'm an overthinker, I do have anxiety problems. Let's just hold it well. Like, uh, <laughs> like I used to tell people, like when I would stream and people seeing me eat like uh, gummy worms or like bringing my cup up and I'm just like holding it there. That's my way of like of me calming down from anxiety. It's just me putting something in my mouth or like, oh, pause. pause. That sounds wrong. Um, <laughs> the, the gummy worms. <laughs> Not as well being perverts and me being the honest woman. I was oh like, oh my God. I was, man, okay. You heard it here first. Jasmina has Look, an oral fixation. This is why she calls me a trollop, but. And a harlot. Um, and a harlot no, all that is, harlot heathen all what is these stuff. prohibition ass insults <laughs> <laughs> that's what she calls me it comes from a place of jealousy because <laughs> i i know jazby having some good sex and i'm just so <laughs> constantly fucking jealous that is one thing i'm jealous of you would think I'd be like jealous of like her like having more money or having a cute body or being super successful. Nah, fuck that. She gets dick. And you know what? This is not about my trauma. Go ahead, Mir. You, you, you sick. You're the sick pup and I need you to notice. Oh my God. How we get, we over here having this, this very warm and intimate discussion well this is our best selves and being this is why i have depression i be in the moment i'll be hanging out with jazz and i'm like man she getting dick down and i'm not i've never had that thought but like that's an example of something that could be depression jingling nigga really oh my gosh it's been it'll be it'll be it'll be Four years this year since I've had sex with a man. Damn. 
Damn. Uh, she hit you with that. Uh, <laughs> damn. She hit you with that Kevin Hart. She said, damn. Yeah, that's... I, why is it so fucking quiet? Did somebody die? Is uh, it a moment of silence? Uh, <laughs> you uh, might, I mean, yeah. if you... You know what I'm saying? If you're trying to get... You might have to get your ass on Tinder. Then. Let's go. You know Let's saying? be present. Yeah. Let's be present. You, you know? Listen, <laughs> you, you get over there and get the sneak dick in. You might have to get on Tinder. <laughs> That's what they go on there for anyway. It is. And like nobody there. looking for love on there. What? What? Yeah, they sneak dicking. <laughs> tender dick to me. Have y'all ever seen the leopard spotted lizard? Like I feel like that's what a tender no. dick is. Is is a, it's a spotted spot? l- yes. I feel like it's a guaranteed S T D you know what? Lizard. Petri that dish. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Damn. And also there's no guarantee that it would be good. I'm not gonna it's- waste my time with dick that's not good. After all this time, well, how no. did you know if you don't sample it? <laughs> how you I'm gonna need, you I'm gonna gotta need three references. You gotta try before you buy. You no, gotta I'm, figure out first. I need, <laughs> I need you. Like, I need to meet you in a public place. I'm gonna bring a form. I need you to fill out the last three bitches that you fucked, and I need their their addresses phone? and their numbers. I'm gonna call them and be like, "Listen, I have Jamarcus <laughs> here in Starbucks." Jamarcus. And Jamarcus, Jamarcus is telling me he got a uh, he has like a nine inch dick. It is super wide. He's got a gray stroke cream, so and he loves oral sex more than anal. Like this is this is Jamarcus. And then when I'm talking to her, let's call her Savannah. Savannah's on the phone with me. <laughs> She's like, Nah, Jamarcus is a one minute man. I want to know. I want the credit history report. Where's the car facts on no, this dick? Car facts on the cock. She want the she money. Said, Run the cock facts. She so Mira, here's my question good. for you. How do you f- <laughs> what are some techniques that you would recommend on how to stay present? <laughs> <laughs> after, after all of that? No, for I, she gonna hit me with that after the cock facts combo. Okay. <laughs> um staying present is just something that I just try to be um conscious of. So every now and then I'm checking myself, like, am I on my phone? Oh no, put it down. Or I just take my phone and just put it away somewhere that it's like not easily accessible Mm -hmm. Um, because I'll be like with my niece and stuff and or I'll be sitting there hanging out with my mom and, you know, she'll be mad because I had an iPad because now you got the iPad and all this other stuff. Um, I just try to tuck it away. Um, And when I'm with people, like when I went out with my friends, I just put my phone in my bag. If it's not near me, I I ain't looking at it. I ain't paying attention to it. I'm talking to my homegirls and that's it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just something that you would have to actively just pay attention to and see, okay, this, cause this is, I want to be better with this. So this is what, these are the steps that I have to take to be better with this thing. Right. So you gonna talk about some damn dingling in the middle of our <laughs> intimate moment. <laughs> it was having such a good moment. It was this a good <laughs> intimate moment. And she said, yeah, so that dick though. <laughs> like, okay. Hello? <laughs> I'll be serious for just one minute. <laughs> Um, okay. something that I've recently incorporated and I haven't picked this up from nobody. I don't know if this is a good strategy. It's just been working for me. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever I feel like I'm emotionally like about to cry or like I'm feeling emotionally overwhelmed, mm-hmm. I have a keyword that I think in my head to completely shut off all of my emotion and it's been working. So like, I remember maybe two weeks ago when I was dealing with the whole phone situation, I was just hormonal and just really, I remember thinking this word and I was able to stop the, the tears in my eyes and just kind of be a robot until I could get myself out of that situation. I'm mentioning that because I've recently started doing that when it comes to being present. If I feel like I'm thinking too much about the past Like I, this really came in, I got to tell y'all what happened after the podcast, but yesterday somebody texted me something and it triggered me so intensely and made me go back to the past that I incorporated this. So I have a word that I think I'm going to tell you the word, the word I think is pair for whatever reason it works for me. And so as soon as I find myself not being present in the moment and enjoying or putting in the effort and whatever I'm doing at that moment, Mm -hmm. if I'm not there mentally I'll think that word and that's just like a trigger word for me to get out of the past get out of the future whatever is happening and just focus on what I'm doing Mm -hmm. and that has been really helping me so if you're listening to this and you deal with with that like your mind wandering literally 20 times a minute my mind will wander away from whatever I'm currently doing 
um, try it and let me know if it works for you. I don't, I'm going to call it, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it cock facts. That's my strategy. Oh, cock facts. Mm-hmm. Oh, the name mm-hmm. aside, I'm very proud <laughs> of both of you guys for making like the <laughs> conscious efforts to like stop like bad habits. I feel like the year of 2024 is just like a year of like, rebuilding and restructuring and just trying to become a better person for a lot of people. Um, Not only just myself, but like I just see people around me trying to do the same thing. And I feel like this will be a good year for everybody to just break out of like bad habits and just become a better person in general, health, health wise, mental wise, like physically, like everything. Like, so I think that'll be good. I agree. And I'm excited because Mm -hmm. even since the year started, I've been sleeping more. I've been Mm -hmm. being, I've become more in tune with my environment. I'm more present. I'm excited about it though. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I've been exercising a little bit. I'm like, oh shit, I'm exercising out. I knocked the dust off my Peloton and all types of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm hype about it. Um, Can I just say like that's the general uh, feeling of this year. Just re regrowth, rebuilding. Mm-hmm. A lot of people starting over and figuring things out. What's up? I just wanted to say um, how proud I am of both of y'all. Just like listening to y'all Thank speak you. right now. And you. you were talking about 2023. When I think about like how everyone right now is trying to like be better mentally and physically and hearing y'all's journeys, like jazz being in the gym, you dusting off the, mm-hmm. how'd you say it? Peloton. I'm gonna make fun of you. <laughs> um, I'm, not, well, I'm mispronouncing it. Yes. Um, <laughs> Peloton. Not, <laughs> Peloton. <laughs> Peloton. Um, Look, but, <laughs> but I'm, I, I'm not just proud of y'all like as like a black woman watching two other amazing black women our industry i feel like you two are people who are no stronger no stranger to naysayers people who sometimes would rather see you fail than succeed because of your success because of the things that you've done and it's really inspiring and just hearing you guys go on this journey of being an even better version of your awesome selves. It just put me in my feelings real quick. So I'm in this mode, like if I think something nice, I want to say it immediately or else it doesn't get said. So I just mm-hmm. wanted to say that to you. That might not go on the podcast, but I just want to say that to you. Oh, well, I appreciate the both of y'all so Thank much. Thank you. I um, appreciate y'all too. This is hella tender. <laughs> <laughs> what that dick? Speaking of tender. Oh my God. I, now, <laughs> I don't I don't want to stay I don't want to stay in my emotions. I gotta get out. <laughs> I like emotions. Allow yourself to feel. And that's one thing I've had to learn in the past, maybe like what, two years? Mm-hmm. Allow yourself to feel things. If you feeling good, feel good. If you feel sad, feel sad. If you want to cry, nigga, cry. Like Mm -hmm. allow yourself to feel things because it's not healthy to keep your emotions bottled up. It builds a lot of resentment. And I think Mm -hmm. it starts to begin to take a toll on you physically. So the stress, the depression, till your bones and shit start hurting your back and shit, Mm -hmm. your legs, shit hurting it. It it wears on you more than it should. And I feel like people need to, you know, feel things. If you need to feel, feel it. Cry, scream. Mm-hmm. Thank express you, yourself. I'm trying to work on that <laughs> very much. <laughs> I'm like I scream and express myself during like video, but like like when it comes to real life, I would mm-hmm. rather because I'm because I'm such an overthinker. I'm like so many things have to get done, and me feeling bad or feeling angry or feeling sad or whatever, it's not gonna have this thing get done any faster. So I kind of just like ignore it for a bit Same. and then I get continue this get this done later. and then by the time that I think about it again I'm already old. so it's like it's no point in me even expressing it anymore so I'm just like all right <laughs> like and I just keep going so yeah can I just say okay. Jess you are the most even tempered person I've ever <laughs> known in my entire life me and Jess have had extreme lows Mm -hmm. and extreme highs together as friends Mm -hmm. and at no point has she ever cursed me out talked about my mama no hung up at my my mama still (laughs) (laughs) but more to the point not just with me with anyone else like she doesn't ever have a bad thing to say about anybody and it's not my ministry but i appreciate that about you not my (laughs) ministry 
not. She's like, don't expect <laughs> that from me. But <laughs> she still got still working on me. But... Um, do we have anything else we want to say about being present? I feel like being present helps you connect with people more too, and try like understand how like that person works or how their personality or even being may be. Cause like, just like um, Mercedes was saying before, like I'm one of those people too, that like notices people like body language and like, I'm a big energy person as well. So like, usually I could like sense when somebody's energy is like off Off. or like something is like wrong. And I would initially ask like, Hey, like you good, you all right. And then like, depending on how they respond, I could be like, Oh, okay. So like this person is feeling they're okay, but like, they might be like angry about something, but I would like rather like pull them to the side later or just like let them be in that emotion, whatever they're feeling right now to let them be in that. And then I check up on them later to see like, if they're like in a better mood. I don't know. It's like, I want like being present allows people, allows me to allow other people to be present what they're feeling as well, if that makes sense. And then like, I just kind of like give them their space and then return back later and be like, okay, like, so were you good? Or like, you want to talk about it? If not, it's fine. Okay. And I don't know. I feel like that helps you like get closer to people in that sense. I agree. I like that. And you actually just reminded me of something. Um, Folks might be mad at what I'm about to say, but Mm -hmm. I've come to the realization within like, I say like the past two years that like, I'm of the firm belief now that um, if you're not in a good headspace, you shouldn't go to things or you shouldn't take part in certain things. All you shouldn't, you don't have to be at every single event if you're not in the headspace for it, because you're doing a disservice to you, your peers, and the potential friends and things that you, you know, the potential relationships that you could build. Um, that's why people haven't seen me at anything. I wasn't in the headspace for it. I just wasn't like I just wasn't there for it. Mm-hmm. And there are some people I know that partook in these things that I'm like, you just was not in the headspace for that. And, you know, I wish I wish people would kind of come to that realization. Like, I'm not in the headspace to go to this event. I know you want me to go. I know y'all want me to go. I know y'all want me to do this, but I'm not I'm not in the headspace to be around people in that capacity. I'm just going to do this now. I'm not saying isolate because isolation is not healthy either, but I'm saying for people You know what I'm saying? When it comes to, especially with our industry where we're building relationships, people are collaborating, getting to know one another. I don't think it's in everybody's best interest when people are not in the good, like in their best headspace and they're not being their best selves and they still get up and go out to these events and go out to these things. Cause I know for me personally, when I used to do that, I wasn't talking to anybody cause I'm, I'm depressed. I'm sad. I'm, that's where the I'm in my phone and I'm in, you know what I'm saying? I'm like stuck doom scrolling or I'm stuck on discord or something like that. Cause I wasn't like mentally my best self and I wasn't physically, you know, I wasn't physically there. So, or I was physically there, but I wasn't mentally there. Um, and I wasn't present. But what, what happened? Sadie's cause I see you <laughs> about to say, Oh, something. I was going to say just at me. Cause you're clearly talking I, about me. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I got halfway through it and was like, "This nigga gonna think I'll talk about." No, her, no, 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 no. What I was—that's not what I was gonna scenario. say. What I was gonna say was when you were talking about headspace, I was like, "Is actually doing a disservice not just to yourself, but the people you're in relationships with, the people that you work with when you're not being mm-hmm. present." Mm-hmm. Like when I think about some of the times when I've been in social situations and my head was fucked up for whatever reason, again, probably because I wasn't being present. Mm-hmm. And I'm giving people not even half of me. I'm giving them sometimes the worst parts of me in the situation um, and how that can affect you not only socially and relationally, but also like career wise. It's interesting to think of it in that term, because like usually when I think about being present, I think about how I'm doing a disservice to myself by kind of staying in the pain or staying in the anxiety and that victimhood makes it difficult to ever be a whole person or give the parts of yourself that not that you necessarily want people to see, but the parts of you that are true to you. I know what you're trying to say. I get it. Well, you're not being present. You're just giving pieces of yourself. And sometimes Mm -hmm. it's not the good parts or sometimes it's only the good parts. And then you have like a fake relationship. 
I think that's it for this week. So we'll be back after a little break. Mira, what's going on? What's up? Do we have any thinking that we want to read this week? We do, but okay. We have three, but all right, we'll go to this one question. Um, Their name is, well, I don't know. We're not reading names, right? We We use a fake name if you want. A fun fake name. All right. Maxine Uh, Shaw, attorney at law. Yeah. Maxine (laughs) Shaw, attorney law said hi Gersadies and ex Mira. I love both of yours confidence how do you stay confident and put yourself out there you two are my role models and I want to be like you one day oh that's <laughs> why she laughing <laughs> what is this face <laughs> confidence why, why, where what is where see this is why I was stalling this question because I knew she was going to y'all shit. know I'm I'm getting better but I was the most <laughs> self-deprecating bitch of all time so quit Mira this is your question go ahead sis I, and Jazzy was well what? me yeah 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 confidence. you give oh. confidence both of y'all give confidence um, ow I be tired my back hurt I, I got back titties and shit. It's back titties slow down your life. Nobody told me that back titties was going to slow down my fucking life like this. Back titties slow down my life. But I, I hate her. I, no, because <laughs> then nobody tell me this. I'm be trying to stream and then and people got, when you going to have kids? When you going to listen? Oh, if you're going to have a big back, so being a streamer is probably a great profession because nobody sees it. You know what? Yes, they do. No, they don't. Not, not mine. Well, if you don't not got the mine. camera on. So anyway, y'all, y'all are both confident <laughs> women. <laughs> oh lord! And even if y'all don't feel it, I'm telling you from an outsider perspective, both of y'all give off very much confident and self assured. So I speak with conviction, mm-hmm. but I don't be always feeling it. So maybe it's a conversation about faking it. How y'all fake it? Oh, I definitely do. Because I got imposter syndrome 24. So Ooh. that's how I be Imposter fun. syndrome be beating my ass. Every day. All the time. But um, I don't have that. I that's do. like the one thing syndrome I don't have. Mm. <laughs> it's a good thing not to have. It is. Okay, it's hold up. Aggravating. Explain to me what y'all's definition of imposter syndrome is. Uh, Like feeling like you don't deserve certain things mm-hmm. like if you succeed in something you feel like you didn't really do like oh i just won i say a trophy like i just won a trophy in something do i deserve it maybe not somebody probably could have got it other than me you don't deserve that or you didn't work hard enough and you should be working harder that's what for at least for me i have the second part oh, of that well feelings of part. inadequacy and maybe beating people ass I'm going to attempt to answer this question since I guess I was also CC'd on this email. (laughs) Um, I do not. I, I have moments of confidence. I have moments where I'm like proud of myself and I have moments where I think I'm pretty great. Um, And I've been having those moments more, I guess, over the last several months, but I'm really good at faking it. You can take that how you want to take it, because however you want to take it, it's true. Well, I feel like she's talking about some of those, but absolutely, I am. Um, <laughs> I feel like sometimes when I fake being confident, sometimes real confidence kind of comes in a little bit. Hmm. That makes sense. I'm like faking it till I actually mm-hmm. like make it. Make it. Mm-hmm. I know people use affirmations a whole lot, and that helps them be confident. I have some on my refrigerator. I have some on my shower. Do I read them? Do I say them? No, but they're there. I made an attempt. <laughs> it's the fact that you know it's there. That's all that matters. Yeah, and they say shit like, I'm in control of my destiny. I am a good person. Um, I will say confidence is very sexy, just to bring it back to sex. There's nothing <laughs> sexier than confidence. Yeah. Am I lying? You're right. You're not lying, you heathen. Confidence, not conceitedness, because conceitedness mm-hmm. will make it dry. I swear, I promise. You know who's really confident? Mm-hmm. No, Dwayne. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> it, and I mean this in the most non-sexual way possible. No, Jess. I know, I get it. I he get gives it. daddy <laughs> energy. He really does. 
Um, so yeah, what you're saying checks out. You do find that attractive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to testify. She's not a liar. <laughs> Listen, we gonna talk about what chaps our ass this week. We going off. You, this it's time for our go off this portion. Now, anybody got any shit to go off about? Because I don't really think I got nothing to go off about. Hmm. I'm just happy to not really be as sick as I was six days ago. I'm Hello, because I was I was going through it. Mm. I have, if I go off on anything, it'd be fucking um, what's that shit? Dust. Fuck dust. Fuck sinuses. <laughs> You kiss my asshole. Oof. Mm. Fuck pollen. Fuck dander. Whatever the fuck causes sinus issues, it could kiss. Pick, pick, pick my right cheek and kiss it. I have, I have two things, and neither one of them are serious or not really serious. Okay. Um. Number one, this one goes for Houston Methodist Hospital. Uh oh. Oh. Um. I went to the emergency room back in October, I want to say, and I was there for six or seven hours. Didn't see a doctor the entire time. Mm. Didn't get pain medication the entire time. Cut to last week or this week, I got an invoice for my hospital bill. Do y'all want to know how much Houston Methodist wants Mm. to charge me for not seeing a doctor and not receiving any medication? How much? Eight thousand dollars. They can yo go fuck themselves because what? I ain't got yo. it. <laughs> I ain't got it. Uh, so Houston Methodist, you can suck the blackest part of my ass as Mira. Um, now was that an saying? itemized? Uh, I no, no that's ahead. that's the whole situation as Go well. Go ahead and ask him for that um, item. Mm-hmm. Uh, second goes to TikTok. Mm-hmm. TikTok, I don't know why I have to keep telling you this over and over again. I keep telling y'all not interested in this content and y'all keep putting this person mm-hmm. on my timeline. Every single day, I get at least five six videos of this person and I still get videos for this bitch. I do not care about Trisha Paytas, Paytas, whatever her name is. TikTok, I've told y'all I don't want to see it. And also Jeffree Star. I don't give a fuck about him either. I hate him. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I've told y'all I'm not interested. I've added it to my block words. I reset my timeline and y'all still keep pushing this bitch in my face and I don't get it. Not I don't get it. You Skeletor? Over and over again. Oh, and it's a jump scare each time. Are y'all gonna pay for my I therapy bill? If I had to see Skeletor when I opened up, I don't. I don't you. get it. I don't oh. get it. That TikTok <laughs> algorithm need a suplex. I was gonna say I got nothing to rant about with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I won't go. I guess I'm the only angry black woman here. That's fine. No, I'm just happy to not be sick. I just want to say that I'm glad to be on this podcast with two successful, beautiful black women. And I'm glad that I'm here with you guys. She's talking to you, Mary. You get to speak. You said what? Girl, don't do that. (laughs) I'm talking about both of you guys. Thank you. Sorry, I'm talking about both of you. Um, because, you know, someone had told me that, you know, they had a lot of a certain thing because they had certain someone, certain somebody send them stuff that I wanted to get. And I was jealous. Huh? You you said too many <laughs> code words. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, this guy. Inside. I don't know. I don't know. She said a certain somebody sent you something and I wanted to send you. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> talking about okay remember i said i was cleaning out my closet and then like you said that you had all of that because oh oh and okay. i want to say what you can so that's why no <laughs> she's talking about like before covid was covid and i was a size 10 and i used to get brand deals with fashion nova and express and boohoo and stuff and so i right. showed her a video of my closet <laughs> and it's just full of shit that's got tags on it that i can't wear because it's a size 10 oh Oh Lord, but I, I'm I'm working on it. 
All right. Do y'all have anything that y'all want to plug? Anything that's coming up? Where can people find you, Jazz? Oh, people can find me on Instagram and Twitter at underscore Jazzy Guns. I don't know why I can't get Jazzy Guns. Somebody already took it before I was able to get it. But that's why I have an underscore. And on (laughs) YouTube, um, it's just Jazzy Guns. And you can call me Jazz, Jazzy, Jasmine, Jasmina, as everybody calls me because of Mercedes. And now I actually call myself. I feel like that's a family name. Yeah, because now whenever like a games be like, what do you want your name to be? I'd be like Jasmina. <laughs> <laughs> and, and oh, Mercedes. So, and I'm, I think I'm whipping your ass in spades this week as well. So um, look forward not, to that. Uh, Me beating her ass time. again. Oh shit! Mayor, 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 listen, listen. She no, only no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Because you won't play What's the thing? I won because I won against the, uh, the rules that was set forward. You know why she won? Because she can't count her books. And got one more point because she had extra books. I was playing with less books and lost. I don't know how that works, but okay. I I, I lost by one point. So. I won. Mary, do you know how to play space? Right way. No. Way. So God weird. damn. So what many Negroes don't know how to play spades, bro. You said we was opposites, nigga. I, I do not. And I feel I be feeling like the only person. Like, but then I see his whole Twitter threads of people. I can't play spades and won't nobody teach me. I'm like, same. You don't want nobody to teach you. You just want to sit and watch. If you want to learn spades, just sit, watch the game. Because if you're going to play it and learn, you're going to get cussed out. So just watch. It's better to watch. Yeah, because every time, like somebody said, I seen somebody say on social media, like every time people try to ask, people like don't want to like show. I'll teach. I'll teach anybody. As long as you know, I will not go easy on you. See, look. See, she ready to go off on niggas. <laughs> Any last thoughts, ladies, before we go out? No, um, but I, I need some wine after this. I was about um, to say drink some water and stay hydrated. But <laughs> All right, y'all have a, a good week. And don't forget, bitches be quick when I'm quicker. <laughs> 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 Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>